What's going on guys? Welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. Today we're going to be tying up this awesome articulated stone fly. It's got lots of movement going through the water with the rubber legs and that free moving body in the back. I've been tying up some cool new patterns for um, trout opener this weekend. Um, some nice big buggy uh, stone flies for some steelhead. So I'm going to get a fresh hook in the vise and we'll get going with this tutorial. So the rear hook and the main body hook I use is a Mustad nymph hook. This is a size 10 and this is a 2XL. Uh, you can tie these as big as you want or as small as you want. Um, since this is for steelhead, I like to keep them relatively compact. Um, I don't want to get a short strike and I want them to take the, uh, the whole fly. So that's why I just use the uh, size 10, the 2XL um, size 10. And uh, they're pretty, pretty nicely proportioned. The thread we're going to be using is some um, UTC semi denier. This is just black. I've started my thread here on my hook shank. The first material we're going to be tying in are the rear legs, and we're going to be using some Flexi Flex, Flexi Floss. Um, there's a bunch of different names for it, but it's just the, uh, the material that comes on the little zip tie, and it's just um, rubber. So I'm going to tie this in, these two legs here. I'm not too worried about the length of the legs. I can trim those after. So I'm just going to take a couple wraps. And what I like to do is actually grab this, fold it over the shank. Then I can just pull back on both of them and make that nice even um, splayed tails there. Just like so. Now we're just going to bring our thread up to behind the eye. And I want to make a little bit of a taper here. I want to taper it towards the eye a little bit. Just to give this fly some more lifelike appearance. So I'm just kind of just building up a little taper. Now I'm just going to come with my scissors and just cut a rough um, length for these tails. And I can come in after and uh, cut them to my desired length. It's just easier to work with uh, less materials hanging off the back. For the rib part, we're going to be using some Wopsy vinyl rib. This is a size medium. And we're just going to pull out a, about a six inch piece here. I'm going to tie this in. Right behind that hook eye. I like to tie this on the top because it is a little bit thicker. This adds to the, uh, the top of the fly. I like to just tie it on the top just so it's not on one side. It's kind of like... Um, like off-centered kind of look weird. So I'm just going to build this taper up a little bit more. And the reason why I'm using this uh, this D-rib stuff is because I'm mostly tying these for steelhead and uh, I want to make these as tough as possible. Um, if you're tying these in smaller sizes um, you can use dubbing or whatever your favorite material is um, when you are tying stone flies. But uh, personally for me, this, uh, this rib gives it the um, segmentation I'm like looking for, as well as the durability. So I'm just going to make touching turns up this body. Till I get to about right where I tied in. Now I'm just going to come under there. Just tie that off nice and tight. Just so it doesn't go anywhere. Then I can just come in with my scissors and cut that little tag piece out. Now I can grab my whip finish tool. I'm just going to throw a four or five turn whip finish in here going to put one more for safety. So 
So at this point, the rear body is done. Um, what I like to do is get some Loon Outdoors fluorescing flow. And I just like to dab those um, thread wraps right there. Just so nothing comes unraveled. Because this part of the fly is going to be moving a bunch. So I just like to make a nice little neat head there. As you would like on a wet fly or something like that. I'm going to hit that for about 10 seconds or so. It'll be good to go. Now I'm just going to pull my hook down into my vise just like so. And this is where I'm going to break it off. So I'm just kind of just wiggling it back and forth. Just like so. So your rear body part is now done. Then you can just put that to the side. And we're going to get the front hook in. The front hook is going to be, this is a Raven specialty hook. It's kind of like an octopus hook. Um, it's got the upright um, eyelet there. And this is also a size 10, so it, it fits with the, uh, with the build pretty nice. It's pretty proportioned, and um, I just like how it looks. The bead we have on here is just a 1 8 gold bead. We're going to be using the same thread in the 70 denier. I'm just going to pull that bead back. Start my thread behind that eyelet. Cut that out. Now we're just going to throw in some antennas here with the same black um, span flex material. I'm also just going to put these in um, a rough length. Then I'm just going to pull that over and come back up the side facing towards the camera. Just like so. I'm just going to cut this to a rough length. Believe me, it's a lot easier to work with this stuff when it's not hanging out everywhere. So I'm just going to throw a little whip finish in here. And just cut my thread out. Now I can bring my bead back up. Now I like to throw a couple wraps of this uh, lead free round wire in 0 0.015. Let's get this fly to sink a little bit faster. Since I usually use this as my point fly. So all the, all the weight helps to keep those split shots off your line. So I did probably about 10 wraps or so there. Now I'm just going to bring my thread back in. Just start right behind those thread wraps. Cut out my tag end. Now we're going to be tying in the rear section to the main body. And all I'm using is some 100% um, eight pound fluorocarbon. You could use wire if you want, but uh, I think this fluorocarbon works just as well. Now, if this was like a, a spay, like an intruder fly, I would use wire. But um, since the main hook isn't on this um, fluoro, I'm not too worried about it. If, uh, if my main hook was on this, then yeah, I would put the, uh, the uh, wire, but this is just the, uh, the rear body. So. so as far as how close you want this, you just want it to be pretty much as close as it can get with um, still have full movement in the rear section to um, move. So that's pretty much how, how far I have it. It's about an eye's length and a half if you're using the, the same size 10. So I'm just going to wrap that all the way up to the bead. Then I'm actually going to grab 
the two tag ends. I'm going to wrap back over it just for safety. Then cut that out. Just like so. So now you got your rear body part attach it to the main hook. Now we're going to tie in the front part. For the wing case we're going to use some black thin skin. I'm just going to cut a little strip here about I say the width of the bead. Just like that. Now for this for the for the main hook, I like to tie this in um, with no body. So this is just going to be just the thorax part. That's why I use the uh, this this particular hook, and not another um, nymph hook, if you will. So I'm just going to get this tied in right to the back here. just like so. Now for the legs in the front we're going to be using the same material. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it over my thread and just bring it up and put it in just like that. Now we're just going to grab another piece here and do the same thing. We're just going to double it over the thread, then bring it up to the hook. Just like so. If you want, you can cut these um, to, to a rough um, length. These ones aren't too annoying. Yes, they're a little bit longer, but it's definitely easier when they're at a shorter length. So now what we're gonna do, we're just gonna make the thorax part. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a dubbing loop. I'm gonna make it right in the center of um, the two uh, legs I have. So I'm just going to grab my dubbing spinner here. And we're just going to put some, we're going to be putting some ice dub in here. And I'm just going to mix a little bit of black peacock as well as a little bit of pheasant tail. Now this is kind of like a darker pheasant tail than usual. Um, sometimes hairline when they make dubbings they uh, you kind of get like a, a different tint to it. Um, I'll show you quick what I'm talking about. So this is the regular pheasant tail. And this is the one I just got. So as you can see, it's a little bit darker. So I'm just gonna grab this, like the uh, the darker one, the brown. We're just gonna mix this up with our fingers. You don't need much. You just need a nice little pinch. Just like so. Now we're just going to throw this in our dubbing loop. We're just going to spin it up. Just 
brush it out a bit. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come behind the back legs, take one full wrap, then we're going to come in front, take one, two, then come in front of the two front legs, and just make one. So you're covering a lot of space and it's still going to look pretty buggy without using a ton of dubbing. So I'm just going to get that secure in there, get a couple more turns just to make sure that it's tight. And then you can come in with your little dubbing brush or um, whatever you use and kind of just pick that apart, just like so. Now I'm just going to grab my wing case material, pull that over everything. I'm just gonna make one little loose, two little loose wraps right there, just to make sure everything's kind of in place. Then I'm gonna pull tight and just cinch that down, make a nice tight wing case there. So now that once that's in, I'm just gonna grab my scissors, pull up just a bit, just like so, cut that out. Then you come in with your whip finish tool. So a nice four or five turn whip finish in there. Make sure that's all nice and seated in there. Now I'm just kind of pick some more of these fibers out, just like so. Now we're just going to put a little bit of Loon Outdoors. This is a thick. We're just going to build up this um, thorax wing case. So you can add a little bit of flash in here too if you'd like. I've actually tied these um, kind of like an articulated uh, prince nymph as well. They look pretty cool. But uh, I like this stone fly a lot. So you can push this um, UV back right down the thorax, right down onto the the back part there. Now once you get your nice little bubble, it's going to come in with the light. Hit it for a good 10-15 seconds. Now we're just going to come in and trim up all the legs. So I'm just going to trim those antennas a bit, the legs, just like so. I'm just going to lift up all these legs here, cut them all off square, just like that. You can kind of just pick out the rest of this dubbing a bit. Looks pretty good. So there you have it. Nice little articulated stone fly. Awesome little steel head pattern. You can change out a bunch of these materials. This is kind of just like a base. Um, pattern for it but I hope you liked today's video guys if you did give it a thumbs up if you have any questions or anything like that just drop it down in the comments um, you can also look down in the description for the fly recipe and all the materials that I used subscribe if you haven't yet thanks a lot again for watching and we'll see you in the next one guys